Uh, so my presentation is actually more of a post-process about after brain and drawing. So what if we know about how our brain works with drawing? And my question is what we can do with that knowledge. So, but, because, but before doing so, I uh, kind of always, why is more important than what? So I kind of explain about the context about why I am researching uh, human-machine collaboration and what is human-machine collaboration. So uh, actually, yeah, I have a lot of problem explaining what it is. So actually, I always kind of find about uh, this uh, nice small clip that was just explaining about the human and machine relationship. Uh, so actually, you probably read quite many articles about that we are losing jobs because of the evolution of robot. And as we realize that there are no counters anymore in the bank anymore, and actually that uh, pharmacists losing their job because they test that for one year of comparing human pharmacists, human pharmacists and robots, and actually robot has zero error producing drugs to patients. And when they compare experienced doctors and they compare to machine diagnosed system, actually machine diagnosed system has less error than human uh, in diagnosing cancer. So we are actually kind of having kind of a struggling that kind of considering robot as actually human competitors, but the reality is is the sound coming? I did not murder Dr. Landing. Wanna explain why you were hiding at the crime scene? I was frightened. Robots don't feel fear. They don't feel anything. They don't get hungry, they don't sleep. I do. I have even had dreams. Human beings have dreams. Even dogs have dreams, but not you. You are just a machine, an imitation of life. Can a robot write a symphony? Can a robot turn a canvas into a beautiful masterpiece? Can you? <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> so for the last two days, we see a lot of uh, sketches from Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. Scientific point of view and educational point of view, they are outliers. Whatever research we work on their study cannot be applied as nominal people like us. They should be excluded from our research because our education research should be the same cohort that it should be applied to. But instead of kind of talking about, but let's kind of like forget about competing robots and humans. What if we work together? We tackle the problem that either robot or humans cannot solve, what if we can solve the problem together? It's actually for my uh, idea about why I'm doing this human-machine collaboration research. And the reason why I'm doing this research is actually I have a couple of anecdotal experience that how the use of the kind of human-machine collaboration improve the capacity of human capability of Edmina and my architect. So this is my first, actually this one is one of my first architecture project after my graduation from uh, master program. And actually this one, as you see that, this one is actually one of the, this was Kupima Blouse project in South, Southern South Korea. Actually this is model looked like this. And actually to be honest, this one at the time, this one is 2006. Uh, no architects know how to handle this kind of complex geometry and many things that actually done by actually outsource them to an like, engineer like Arrow. And actually the in-house actually we have expert kind of model making as you recognize this one is actually a fake model. There's no uh, rationale or kind of structural performance in this uh, physical model. It's just representation of what it will look like. That's it. And actually as you see that we only can handle two-dimensional information at the time. So kind of we cannot really develop any ideas working on these three-dimensional shapes. So uh, originally my background was actually engineering. I learned about computer programming, but I kind of start to use my programming knowledge for this project. So actually I developed a software that generate complex all the details and humans and actually three-dimensional thing out of using computer programming. And, and then actually this one is actually how I made it. So from the kind of raw surface model, I can 
that can generate all kind of possible details from a chip model. And actually, but this one is actually a very expensive project for Korean government, and we actually hold this project so many times, and actually Korean government want to analyze that this project is really worth investing money on it. So this one is a project is on hard, but actually it, this one is actually simply constructed and actually finished its construction. This is how does it look like. So, but at the side, the kind of while this project is on hard, actually I was working for another international competition on in, in China. So this one is actually Museum of Contemporary Art and Planning Exhibition in China, and actually this one is actually local, uh, kind of the above the Hong Kong, the Shenzhen area. So this one is the like first scheme that. So this one is supposed to be a single stage of international architecture competition that another competitors like Jaha Harid and other persons. But the Chinese government actually does do not happy about all submissions. So instead of uh, just uh, announcing one final winner, they gave us on, uh, they, so they select five finalists and they just gave us one week to submit the second version. So, so actually, though, kind of, there was a kind of like neighboring team. So actually, the project architect asked me, "Hey, can you come on our, on our team and then can you help us?" So I used all the software I developed for the Busan project, and actually, this <coughs> one is. So now we redeveloped from scratch and we prepare another new design. Of course, that architects do two-dimensional thing. In the meantime, I did three-dimensional thing. So once we have or just overlap surface, very primitive, uh, rudimentary model, my software can generate all the details, people's and the window details, other stairs too. So kind of even this one is this one week project, we can actually iterate two or three times of variation of structural design. And then actually after we submitting them, we won the competition. Wow. And actually, w the review, what we heard from the reviewers was that you are the only team that submit the kind of significantly improved version. All other teams are submitted to fine tuned little variations. So, the collaboration between this kind of new knowledge, which is computer science, with architecture design can make us extremely competitive. So and then actually, so after this one, I kind of so this was our final, uh, the second project. Yes, consider this is one week project. It's really rude, but actually this one is actually be outsourced for, uh, actually for uh, press release and other stuff. It's going to outsource rendering, but this would look like. And actually this one is actually going through another third and fourth iteration. So actually the design is actually radically different from now on. And then after finishing this project, I switched to another office in Rotterdam. And then actually, this one is actually designing a headquarter of uh, AB and Amro Bank, which is actually Bank of America. So consider that this one is a Bank of America in Netherlands. And actually, they asked us to design the headquarter of it. Actually, the lower part here is existing headquarter, and then we want to design the top part. Hmm. So uh, what kind of the main idea about this project is that actually we create a kind of public space plaza and then that can be a kind of void space, you know, cubic space. And it's kind of, it's really kind of iconic and kind of public space engaged in. Problem is, Rotterdam rule is that <coughs> municipal, municipal rule is no new building can add any additional shadow area. Mm. Basically, they don't want to add any new building in the center of Rotterdam. So actually, we have a lot of issue, and actually, so we have to solve this problem. So what we did was we decided to do the most intensive light and shadow analysis using form generation methods. So as you see here, I kind of like, so first I designed, I kind of developed by manually done, and I transferred it to computer algorithm that actually exactly do what human architects do to generate the same design. But in this case, actually, Changing all the shape and sizes and different angles and to try shadow, it's kind of like took for just one variation requires two three hours of, of human job, but by do by writing so I spend like two days to write this algorithm and running is about three hours and we can generate. So each one is actually each variation. The, this this little description is actually. Uh, kind of write down all the parameters, the angle, the size of the, the, of the void. And so each one is actually a variation. As you see, we have 15 variations per each page. We have 500 pages of them. So over 12,500 12, variations can be generated in two hours. 
So um, for, but for each generation, actually, we do sun shadow studies. Actually, the, this page is actually each variations, the sol, uh, sun and shadow study, best case, June 22, August 20, September 22, and December 22, from 9 to 6 p.m. So we actually submit this document to Rotterdam municipality, and they said, OK, to go. So we can actually go past the design. But there's another interesting moment. So, so we passed it, and then so we are kind of revising and updating, and we are preparing the second review uh, presentation. And actually, uh, this one is actually a material that we kind of, so at the time, it was uh, eight team members of one project architect and three senior architect, one junior, and several interns. We spent a whole month to updating it and recalculating floor area and kind of, we checked all the kind of possible, all the floor is working well because we have a round surface. And actually around midnight, that is, we are ready to submit the next package and we realized that, oh, we didn't do the solar set, uh, the sun and shadow study for this new project. We are so busy. And then doing, generating another <coughs> solar, kind of doing is another three, four hours job. Of course, it was intern's job. <laughs> and the intern actually so exhausted, but we didn't sleep that much well, and come to me that, hey, can you check your previous report? That maybe there is something similar with the current design. So we dig into our previous report, which is basically this one, and we found one. Of course, it's not really precisely identical, but it's close enough. We can use it for, so actually this one is actually a different one, but close enough to the current one. Seven months, one month is of seven talented architects. The result is already in one of the variations that generated for two hours. Can our can design be programmed? What if we working on traditional way for a whole month? What if? We just check the performance of previous result. What if I write down another well, I spent it one day to write an algorithm that checking all the performance of previous variation and pick the best performing one. Can design be computational algorithmic process? This kind of, and then this is actually the, so after this project, so I went to MIT and I continue my research on human machine collaboration, particularly using computational process. So now I'm going, so this is the final result. Actually, again, uh, this project, as you expect, Impossible to build. It's too expensive project <laughs> making structure curvy. No, it's actually this one is extremely simplified. And the third version is just a split click, a block, got a boy thing. Quite expected at the time even. Okay, so this one, but kind of we kind of create an iconic, beautiful design at the time. Okay, so I'm sure you're on that too. So, so I kind of a little bit. I kind of assume that you assume that you don't know about computer vision. So uh, artificial network is actually a computational algorithm that about 30 years ago, computational scientists and neurologists tried to study about how brain works and then kind of try to imitate an algorithm that mimic the, our neuron uh, our brain system. Uh, at, the, at the first time when it was first, probably it was kind of, it is highlighted everywhere, I loved it, but actually, but uh, this one was almost kind of killed by, as you know, Marvin Pye, Marvin Minsky, Minsky that, you know, this one cannot solve X or It's a technical issue, so I would just uh, do not go that way. So, it, but, <laughs> But what is important one is that, uh, I'll just go through what is, first of all, what is artificial neural network. The more, uh, actually the recent findings about the neuroscience is that actually, at first time it was developed, they, many people think that artificial neural networks is well imitate how does, how the, how the brain works. But more and more and more research says that no, not really it's true anymore. So it's just kind of, so artificial neural network currently is just understand as one simplified or superficial model of explaining the mechanism of how brain works. That's it, that's the only value currently. But still it's kind of quite valuable. So this one is actually showing okay, so, uh, how actually brain works. Um, so this one is actually a fish's brain. And as you see that uh, electric signal from to the end, it just kind of goes through and activate the neural network. And you probably see it suddenly it, you see the bomb, the kind of light mm -hmm. flashing? That is actually what 
uh, people say it's actually a so-called aha moment, which is you, you learn a lot of uh, kind of difficult concepts you don't have idea, but you still keep thinking about oh, what is it, what is it, and suddenly, oh, I figured it out. It's actually the neural circuitry is create a circuit that in your brain that actually that's what you understand, all kind of new concept. But to be honest, again, the more and the more neuroscientists research about how the brain works, it's actually all the conclusion of a neuroscience research said, we know too much, we don't know too much things about brain. Actually, that's the research. So they're really far away to go. But just kind of introducing how brain works and play, that's it. So let's kind of see that. So how our eye tr understand drawing. So actually, let's say this one is your family, or let's say you see that. Let, imagine that your wife and son is in front of you. Uh, and then your, the images actually go through your lens. And actually, the lens images actually projected the inner, the inside of your eye, which is a retina, but actually reversed upside down. <laughs> and actually, what you really see is actually the upside down image through the retina, but more, part, more technically, it is actually through the rods and cones. So actually, this one is actually rod, rods and actually these cones. And actually, rods only read the low level of light, and cones read high level light and color. Rods actually cannot read color. So actually, when you, when you are in a dark place, you see an object, and you see the very dark and almost colorless gray sea object, and you may think that, oh, it looks dark and colorless because there's no light. No, it's not true. The reason is human cannot see color using rod, using, because rod cannot read the color. Only we can read color if there's high level of light with color, we then cones actually read the color and the object. So actually, this one is actually a, a one size of the retina, which is the back side of your eyes. But as you see, the black is where rod is, and the, all the colored one is actually cones. But actually, cones actually read a specific color spectrum only. So one, some cones read red, some cones read green, some cones read blue, and all it only read that part of uh, colors. And actually, the image actually go back to your back side of the uh, your eyes, let's say that, let's say this one is the image, and let's say you want to see the kind of the sun of it, and actually how does the, your, your actual perception of the image is actually this, which is each cone, not road, actually read the value of blue or red or orange, and actually it read the intensity of the brightness or color. You, yeah. Matrix, we don't exist. <laughs> we see, just we see, just we are kind of pre post processing what the, sen the uh, sensors in your eyes read. And actually, in computer science way, actually, we can convert it, the magnitude of the uh, light is actually can be converted to numbers. Mm. And actually, this is what computer sees, and this is actually computer vision. But actually, this one is actually input data of computer vision. Actually, there are many, many, many ways how to then actually recognize this value to my son is actually unknown. Actually, there are many, many researches going on. It's still going on, going on research. And actually, so this is kind of just one of the uh, earliest part. Which is, let's say that you have a matrix of numbers. There are kind of hidden layers, meaning that you know, synapses have multiple layers of it. And at each level of synapse, actually abstracting your, uh, the values. And actually, we called it labeling it. Labeling means actually it do Actually, give, this is so-called uh, uh, supervised learning, which is that you give information and the label. That's say that the person in front of you has yellow face, and this is called Asian. So now let's kind of so using so let's assume that we know this knowledge, and I kind of try to use this knowledge to teach machine architecture knowledge. So let's try that. So this is my first prototype. My first. Uh, Novice student, architecture, who want to learn about architecture. So first, I will teach basic shapes. So I kind of draw it, and I teach this machine that this one is rectangle. So it runs what is rectangle. And I draw triangle, and I teach machine that this one is triangle. So this was supervised learning. I provide the data and the label. <coughs> and then, but actually sketches are a little different. So let's say, I draw a tiny little shape, and let's see how the, and, and ask, wait, what is it, machine? Then it said, it is rectangle. So now let's go deeper. 
So instead of, so now let's say this machine is actually learned enough about it. So now I teach more advanced knowledge. So now I draw a plan. And there's a circular stair here. And there's another exterior chair. And there's a, probably some partition work here. And another partition work. Probably some of you may recognize it. <laughs> So this one, as I say, it, yeah, it's, it's a, the sketch is so bad, so I, I don't blame you. So instead, I say 1922, Le Corbusier, <laughs> the Troyan house. <laughs> and I teach, I teach one project of Le Corbusier's Troyan house. Let's teach one more thing, which is, I just draw very similar, but it has swimming pool outside. And it has some partition wall. It has kind of another pond and some walls here. I would say 1929, uh, Ms. van der Rohe, Barcelona. Uh, you get the one in the wrong place. You probably. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know that part <laughs> so now I teach to plant, and let's. See that you are a student, and let's say you draw a plan, and then to kind of extend that you have something round shape here, and then you have something here, and then, and then the student don't know what he's doing, and then he asks to the machine, "What am I doing?" Then he said, "You may want to check 1922 Le Corbusier's Drawing House." Mm -hmm. So this one is a kind of my teaching machine, and machine can teach other students. So this is my kind of machine human collaboration that I teach machine that machine can teach as humans teach another human students. But this one is actually very, this one is actually only uh, very, very primitive level of artificial, artificial neural network. The problem is, if I draw this way, I can recognize it, but this one has a limitation that it does, if, if the, and the rotation is, diff, uh, rotation is changed, or if it is kind of, let's say if I, but if human sketch has no direction, no scale. So if I do this, I think she's some difficult way doing something so well. <laughs> but this one actually does not work and does that well. Because this one is work well because I only teach two, it just pick only one or two, that's kind of high probability. That's it. <laughs> so um, this one is actually all this stage of uh, then actually let's go so now uh, now I'm going to actually go a little bit deeper. But architecture uh, drawing, which is actually advanced plan and section, is not really composed of like this simple line drawing. It has a lot of details. And actually, kind of sometimes they do line drawing. Some people do color sketches. Some people do rendering sketches. So there are a lot of kind of visual variations. So I need I need a advanced algorithm can that detect detect regardless of the visual style. The machine should recognize what it is. So actually, this one is actually the, the high level actually uh, computer vision algorithm. So let's imagine that. Very typical midterm review or final review. So students present all his drawing on a board, and experienced tutors actually critic on it. And that's what the essence of architectural education, because experienced people can only recognize his drawing, link it to another project, or, or his previous project, or, or his project and his knowledge. That's only experienced many, many years of knowledge required. OK, I go a little bit faster. So what can we? make a machine like that. So this one is actually my, I call this a synthetic tutor, a computer vision tutor. It has a camera on the head and to read the plan, and there's a small projector on here and then recommend some related project. So, but I just, I couldn't bring, of course, this dummies here, so I just take out his eyes and then kind of <laughs> <laughs> uh, So actually, I just bring uh, one sample here. Uh, so probably some of you already know what it is, and some people may not know. And actually, let's imagine that if you don't know about this plan, there's no way for you to know about this plan without any advanced ex or experienced architecture instructors. There's no way for you to know what this plan is. And actually, this is my uh, computer vision tutor. And I oh, said this one does not record with my camera. Okay. <coughs> okay. This one now recognizes. 
Is it? Yeah, this one is so this machine to learn I trained for five minutes so this one knows so far 10 famous contemporary architects 150 plants <laughs> so I ask so kind of I ask to my students follow near the final review please come to me and kind of show okay so now I please come to me and then show your drawing to this machine tutor and if you like to do you can get some feedback from it so now what what kind of at the time what they did was actually they bring actually they post their plans and sections on the wall and actually they use this camera and they show it to that so uh, this is what camera says now right now Oh, <laughs> Technology. <laughs> okay, so then actually this one actually, uh, so what this will do, yeah, this one, actually what this will do is it identify the object and it recommend, it Google search for you and then it shows the related architecture project to you. Wow. Actually, can you actually set the internet? Probably it is more important to see. HTT Wi-Fi is free. Can you type it? Okay, so get connected. Yes. That's it. Okay, so I'll to uh, exaggerate a moment. <laughs> I'll try one more time. Okay, so um, so I started. Okay, so this is what the camera is now. Now uh, it's a way to autofocus it. And if I press enter, this one recognize. Corvigia's Christian house. Of course, this one does not really work well. Mm -hmm. But actually, this one actually tells you something related project for you. So it kind of like identify mm -hmm. what is the plan look like compared to print. So this is kind of like machine learning tutor. Um, and then actually, I surveyed that. Hey, what do you think about this kind of feedback? <laughs> and of course, uh, are you happy about it? Then half students said, okay, I'm, okay, it looks good. But most of the students, okay, so it's thirty-three percent say highly satisfied, but also uh, ten percent and five percent said mm, not really. <laughs> and then actually, how useful is the feedback to improve your design? Then said half, pro, half, and most of it, ninety, eighty percent said it's okay, but about ten percent said, oh, this one is useless. And then actually, I asked that how related the feedback that you you got from the machine is actually. They said somewhat related, but actually, again, this one is very small, no, it needs to learn only about five minutes about architecture. And then actually, uh, when I say, how do you evaluate the feedback from the machine compared to your human instructor's feedback? <laughs> so, but most of them say that 50%, okay, both are equally good, but many people also say that instructor's feedback is better than machine's feedback, of course, yes. <laughs> I believe. Or which is faster. Yeah, and then, oh, okay, so, okay, so I cannot really say that, but oh, among the comments, the kind of, the, I, so I kind of also ask that, write down what you feel about it. It's actually, the reason why they hate this kind of prop, uh, feedback is actually they don't have humanly feeling. So kind of like, kind of, so they don't think it is machine, so that's why they just don't like it, because it's not <laughs> human. But another, a couple of comments, it says that this machine find out the project 
long time ago, I checked it, but I forgot. And another instructor forget, but this machine refined out the project. It's, I think this one is actually anecdotal, an extent. I cannot really theorize that, or I cannot say that this machine can do, but it is, I just understand it, it is possible. So then actually then, so one of the great things about Gaussian will run fast. Okay, zero minutes. Okay, so uh, one great thing about this machine learning algorithm and artificial neural network, quite advanced from previous AI, is that 70s and 80s AI was domain specific. What it means is that if you have an AI for medical science, that's just for a medical science. They cannot be applied to any other domains. So even in the medical science, if someone developed AI for cancer diagnosis or AI for internal medicine, it's just for internal medicine uh, cancer diagnosis. But actually, in about this kind of AI, the new AI machine learning thing is it's general AI, meaning that do you remember that why computer is so amazing? Because it's general machine. It can do anything. It can be word processing. It can be PPT. It can be so. It can be actually trans transferable. Not really one-to-one -one transferable, but the, the core algorithm can be applied and application can be changed. And actually, I use this actual algorithm. So I apply uh, this one. This actually, I'm kind of combining this AI algorithm with actually a building information model, which is Rapid. So what this Rapid actually will do. So this one can automatically generate forms based on the following the project information, location, site, what is the maximum height, what is the uh, uh, FAR or render residue, render residue value. It can actually generate a kind of a primitive various uh, generative form. And actually it also can be applied different Seattle or Boston, the different location file, it can actually generate a lot of various form. And then what is critical is actually everybody have actually a different view about architecture. For example, if, for, if it's a hotel, and actually you may want, some people like to, buy, to rent a room with a, a C size, but some people prefer to see in the kind of land side. Actually, even though it has the same size of the room and same size of the facility, actually the prices are different, meaning that the value of architecture project is not simply calculated, rather, the value is generated by a person who evaluated, and for each person have different value criteria, and it has created all kind of thousand different values. So after it is generated, a kind of primitive form, it can also, anyone can actually, uh, oops, It can generate the value based on, uh, based on do you prefer, do you like a building with sustainability or do you, uh, do you prefer something has good convenience in loading or kind of do you like, do you think it is height, room height is important or do you think that view to the outside is important or do you think daylighting factor is important and actually they can actually parameterize all kind of different things and actually we are kind of applied this one for actually a uh, wet lab, which is wet lab is, so this one is actually a laboratory facility. So when they actually apply to combination of wet lab and compu uh, then dry lab, dry lab basically is computer lab, wet lab is actually chemical lab and bio lab who need a lot of loading. And we actually compare the result. So it's just, this one is actually all different result based on different uh, uh, criteria. Sustainability, the central room is actually higher value than the outside. But in terms of loading, actually the first and second floor is the highest value, but the rest has zero value. And landmark, so there's a landmark, so it's a kind of like a distance actually value. And this is wet lab and dry lab. So when it, actually the, this is the kind of the uh, artificial neural network algorithm. And when it actually, this one's wet lab. So what it means is that the parameter of the building is actually a good place for lab and the center space yellow and the bottom is not a good place for laboratory. And actually what architects really do is actually they create a laboratory space on perimeter area, then create a circulation atrium in the center and they place commercial airspace. Highly real estate development way of designing is actually that's what machines do. So this one is actually a very different process. This one is actually information processing. But the experienced architect, what they do is actually, can I say, is also information processing. So this one is like so far my project, but again, this is not, I'm not the first one who think about this one. Negro Ponte, 
MIT colleague. <laughs> Let's think about a machine that learn about learning about architecture. Let us call such machine as architecture machines. And the partnership of an architect and the, such a device, a dialogue between two intelligence systems, human intelligence, machine intelligence, which capable of producing an evolutionary system together. Very long idea, that's 69. But computer, so, and this is what I'm pursuing for the next direction. Thank you very much.